स्वभावचिन्मयानंदम कृपा पूर्णम जगत्पति here even this technique going from words to wordlessness first thing you need is being honest with your words if you directly practice this technique it won't help because now you are filled too much with the cerebral layer too much of lies, you are just a bundle of lies, nothing but bundle of lies. That is why constantly you are suffering and struggling inside. You can't sit with yourself because so much of pus is coming out, too much of smell. <laughs> Why you can't sit with yourself? Why you are feeling so restless, constantly irritated? Whether you are in the bathroom or whether you are in the bedroom, you can't be just with yourself. You can't be with yourself. You are just, your inner chattering is too much. Your entertainments are, your TV, your entertainments are nothing but the body soli but the scent, perfumes which you use to escape from your own smell. Sometimes the smell becomes too much. You use perfume just to avoid your own body smell. Your entertainments are nothing but you trying to avoid the smell which is inside you. Your inner space is smelling too much. There is so much of lies created, created, created. And you are jumping from this corner to that corner deciding whether to fulfill it or not if you decide to fulfill how to what to chaos just look into your life all the disturbances is created by you consciously knowing that you are creating the words which you can't fulfill you are taking up things knowingly you can't go behind it you are uttering the words, you are signing the documents knowingly, you can't fulfill it. Auspan Sky was fortunate enough, he met Gurjeev and courageous enough to go with the Gurjeev's words to f understand, he is just empty filled with too many words which he knows clearly is not the truth. If you are also fortunate enough, just sit and list the words in how many places to how many people knowingly you utter the words knowingly you can't fulfill you can't go behind it. You can't see the end of it. Forget about unknowingly what all you did. If you do knowingly the same mistake ten times, the eleventh time you will be doing it without even knowing that you are doing a mistake. Because the, by the time that becomes a habit. That becomes a habit. Sanyas means being honest with your words. Understand? I am describing the word sannyas in Sanskrit. Nyasa means purifying. Being honest. Sannyas means purifying your everything. Being honest with everything. I always tell people. Sannyas does not mean you need to leave your house. No. Sanyas does not mean you need to leave your wife. No. Sanyas does not mean you, leave, you need to leave your life. No. If you just leave this lies, that's enough. But many times you will not understand you are you have filled your life with the lies unless you move away from them. That is why 
Sometime I create a space where you need to move away from the things. Just to show you that you are filled with lies. If you can just move away from the lies, the amazing, uncountable number of lies which you created, which you can't even count, you created, created, created so many bundles. One big thing, one important thing, if the lies, number of lies has become too much, the bundles of lies has become too much, you start thinking they have become truth. The bundle of lies gives you the confidence that you have too much around you, too many things around you. Then you start thinking, oh, so much cannot be lie. I met a priest, said, Swamiji, show me the truth. Please guide me. I am a serious seeker. I said, Are you are such a wonderful seeker. He said, Swamiji, in the initial level I started out of my insecurity. If I have too many people following me, I will feel secured. Then by and by I started believing. If so many people are following me, then I, I, I must know the truth. I must be knowing the truth. What I am uh, talking must be truth. The initial level, I started convincing them I know the truth. But after some time, seeing so many followers, I started convincing me that I know the truth. But somehow, fortunately, I had a big blow in my life that taught me that I don't know. I need to seek. Sometime, the sufferings come as a blessing. Of course, he was fortunate enough, intelligent enough to face that blow and understand that he need to look inside. He was a very honest guy, fortunate guy, that at least he was able to look inside and realize he has built his whole life, whole thing, just on lies. Just because people can't verify, courageously living or vomiting lies, look into your life, how many places you are doing, how many ways you are doing it, especially when to your kids, how many places you are telling lies, but they are very intelligent. One guy was telling to his son, do you know in your age what Abraham Lincoln was doing? Son said, I don't know about that, but I know in your age what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Understand? Constantly you are telling lies to your kids just because they are innocent and they can't verify. You tell big, big stories, making yourself as a hero. It is always a passion for every parent. You can't be a hero for so many people. At least let, you be let me be a hero to a person who is dependent on me for his food and shelter. <laughs> now that is the way you behave. That is why you are so possessive about kids. That is why constantly you are trying to project that you are a hero to them. At least let these two, three people believe. <laughs> Just because you are giving food and shelter, you force them to believe that you are their hero. But somehow, fortunately, they are intelligent to find out. At least after a few years. And not only to your kids, Look into your life in so many places. You are creating a bogus, foolish image which has no base. Identity, knowingly, you are not qualified, you are not going to fulfill it. 
selling yourself in an ugly way. Selling yourself is okay for marketing, for business. But by and by you start believing it. You start believing it. You know how to talk. And I am afraid of the people who are marketing themselves. Whenever they come to me, I tell... Actually, people who market themselves, simply I don't trust them. Because they themselves do not know how many percentage of statements they are making is lie and how many percentage is truth. They are the most dangerous people. Now they are the most dangerous people. Just escape from them. If you find somebody who is marketing himself to you, just run away from him. <laughs> now just escape. You will be saved. At least you will be in what you are. Because already you have enough of lies carrying in your head. Why do you want to accumulate more? Karma means the lies put on your head, vomited on your head by a person who is marketing himself. Who is not clear about the lies which he is uttering or the truth or the power of the statements which he is uttering. He himself is not clear about the power of the statements which he is making. He himself is not clear what he is uttering, how much is lie and how much is truth. I have seen the so-called seekers. They will make so many statements which has no base and you can't even tell them to verify. They will feel hurt. That's the most dangerous thing. If you tell them, they will say, no, 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 no. I'm okay. You can play that I'm okay game, selling yourself that game with outsiders, not with masters. When you play that game with the master, you are cheating yourself. That is why I always tell people, people come and tell me, you are my God, you are everything. I have heard enough of these ugly lies. If somebody feels I am God, he, he doesn't have to tell me. I will know very clearly by his body language. People come and tell me, I believe you are my God, please heal me, you have to heal me. I tell them, I never asked you to believe. You are posing as if you believing me, you are doing a favor for me. <laughs> no. That's a belief created for the sake of utility. I have seen people. They can put, put you in the throne of the God in one minute and they can dethrone you in one minute. In one second, not even one minute. If I don't do their homework, that same moment they will dethrone. No, 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 I think he lost his, all, all his powers yesterday itself. <laughs> they can give powers and take powers. Funny game. It is okay to play the funny game if you are not serious about the growth or enlightenment. But if you are serious, stop the funny game at least at some point. Today Mahadeva is creating an opportunity for you to stop the funny games you are playing. To stop the funny things you are doing. Just decide. For next 21 days you will not sell yourself with lies. You will not talk anything which knowingly you can't fulfill. Decide just for 21 days. If you decide for whole life, you won't even do for one day. I know you. <laughs> Just decide for 21 days, you will not utter a word knowingly that you can't fulfill it. You can't stand up for it. You will not go behind it. Knowingly. Then suddenly you will realize, 
unknowingly how many lies you created around yourself. I call this as conscious radiation. Let you radiate yourself consciously so that all the cancers will come out. In your inner space, too many cancerous growth is happening because of the lies which you created. You see, if some particle can't become part of your system, but if it is inside your system, that is the base for the cancer. The growth which is happening around it becomes cancerous. Same way, there are some idea or the truth or the statement which you created, which has not part of become your system, which is a lie, that becomes cancer in your inner space. First, clear those things, let the operation happen. Do not make a commitment or a statement in any discussion with others or with yourself knowingly that you can't stand for it. Just for 21 days. See very clearly how many places you are living with lies. You are abusing yourself and the people who are around you. Then start this technique. This technique can lead you to enlightenment, the truth, within three days. You don't need more than three days because it's a very powerful technique. Very powerful technique. When I say three days, I mean three twenty-four hours. Not more than that. Just three twenty-four hours. I know the meaning of the words which I am uttering. I know it. That's why I am talking. But the thing you need to do before entering into this technique, clear your inner space from the lies which you created around yourself and the lies which you vomited on others. You are you have created your own spider net. So many lies. All your relationships are filled with so many lies. That is why you lost trust on yourself and on others. If you sit with yourself, your inner personality is haunting you. Many times you try to avoid, just if you are saying, no, 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 it's okay, everybody is like that only. Everybody being in depression does not mean you should also be in, de in depression. Alright, if you choose that, I have no problem, be in depression. Everybody being in the same state cannot justify you being in the same state. I know. The big problem is these guys come and sell themselves to me knowing. I think they are not even knowing. If they, are, if they know that they won't try to do that. Whenever this type of people come and trying to sell, I tell my inner circle, this fellow is playing with mind, I played with the mind itself. <laughs> he thinks he can sell the words. But the difficulty is by and by you forget you are lies, you are a bunch of lies. Not only with me, wherever you go, you just carry that bunch of lies. Wherever chance or time permits, you just throw your lies and just wait who gets sold by your lies. Life and identity filled by lies is hell. You don't need separate hell. It is just filled by the depression and the deep suffering. The technique is so powerful. He says a simple method. Just visualize letters, means words. Visualize words. First, in a colorful way. Second, forget those words and 
visualize, be with that feeling created by those words. Then, drop the feeling also and be free from it. For example, create the word love. If that words are, if that word is authentic in you, that feeling also will raise with that word. But the problem is you have created so much of lies around each word. Cleaning those lies itself takes so much of time. If you have a lie created around the word love, the word cannot lead you to enlightenment. You have created too many lies around every word in your life. That is why no word creates a powerful feeling in you. Every word has become just marketing. Husband has become boyfriend. Wife has become girlfriend. Because the relationship does not have depth. In Vedic tradition, you can't imagine still the followers of Vedic tradition more than 1 billion on the planet earth, still 90% of them live with one husband or one wife till the death. The reason is, from the beginning, the respect added to relationship. The words which you utter is filled with lies. If you are saying that you are loving somebody, you are in love with somebody, you are thinking you are in love with somebody, not actually. Your ideas about each words is polluted, corrupted so much with the lies which you created. When people come and tell me that they accepted me as a guru, I just laugh. You neither know what is what do you mean by the word guru? What do you mean by the word disciple? How can you say, I am your guru? And tomorrow itself, if I don't fit in your frame, you will just, you won't bother to throw that word away. Throw that relationship. I have seen so many funny things happening. One guy who attended one of my Gita lectures, came to see me and he was sitting in front of me and praising me left and right. Praising me means you are Krishna, you are God, you are these, that. Too many things and he is a great Krishna Bhakta. I was little uneasy. I became uneasy whenever I listen the words coming from the source of lies. I'll be very happy even if they tell me, even if they blame me, based on the truth. But of course, anybody who is based on the truth can never blame me. That is different. <laughs> but I am afraid of people who praise me, who are based on lies. Because these fellows, ugly fellows can take away any time the words which they uttered. And he was sitting and talking, all big, big words and theories. Just one funny thing happened, one of my disciple, lady disciple, she was leaving the ashram. Means going to different city for some work. So usually before they leave the ashram, they come and take leave from me, they touch my feet. Maybe have one hug, because they are not going to be around me for next few days. She came and touched the feet. And she was really feeling that she is going to be away for two months because she is going for some work. And she was having tears in her eyes. I just gave her one hug. It was such a sweet, loving, innocent expression. She just started weeping. She said, okay, I will take leave. I said, don't worry, I will be with you. She left. This guy was sitting and talking to me, I am God, I am Krishna and all these things. He can't tolerate a Swami hugging a woman, gone, over. <laughs> over. 
just he got up and walked out and he started talking to others no i can't imagine he is a swami <laughs> till last moment he was talking to me you are krishna and the uh, picture of krishna or murti of krishna which he is worshiping i have seen in his house surrounded by 20 30 girls and not only surrounded dancing <laughs> and i was shocked the lies with which this guy was talking and he can't tolerate one hug means what the words which you are uttering has no meaning you don't know the depth of the words and you are just uttering because it is free we should make people pay tax for the words <laughs> then lot of disturbances will be reduced on the planet earth <laughs> there should be a small meter which counts the words they utter <laughs> which counts the number of words they speak and there should be tax for that <laughs> then so much of problems can be avoided in the planet earth the crime rate can be brought down drastically he was praising me for half an hour one hug is one activity which does not fit in his frame is enough to dethrone me and she was my mother's age who i my hug she was my mother's age must be more than 50 but this fellow can't tolerate can't digest this is what i call uttering the words knowingly you are telling lies knowingly you can't go behind the word till the end just because of the courage that it can't be verified you will not be cornered you will not be questioned do not utter any words you are creating so much of karma karma means the net from which you can't escape the bondage by uttering the words knowing that it is not truth you can't stand for it you can't stand behind it you can't live up to it that is the most dangerous thing you are doing to yourself you are doing to yourself people come and tell me i am a good person never did anything against anybody why did this big disease came to me why am i suffering look into your life you would have spoken so many words lies knowingly you can't support it just because you can't be cornered you would have been vomiting it out you would have been telling it first thing come out of it come out of it has given birth to great paramahamsas mystics saints and divine avatars who have consistently delivered this world from darkness to light one such enlightened master exuding divine grace overwhelming compassion and unfathomable spiritual knowledge all at a very young age is paramahamsa nityananda koti surya swarupinam ananda ganda ishwaram bhakta hridaya nivasinam nityanandam namostute koti surya swarupinam ananda ganda ishwaram bhakta hridaya nivasinam
Nityananda was born as Rajashekaran, the second son of his parents Arunachalam and Lokanayaki in the temple town of Tiruvannamalai, South India. Ten days after he was born, the family astrologer predicted that Rajashekaran would grow up to become a Raja Sanyasi and guide the world, something his parents were not happy to hear. At the age of 10, Rajashekaran was initiated by Raghupati Yogi. In his moment of initiation, Rajashekaran was blessed with a vision of Parashakti. He went home and carved the vision he had in soapstone. One day, Rajashekaran was found etching a complex shape on a copper foil. It was the sacred Shri Chakra. The Shri Chakra is believed to be a diagrammatic representation of the cosmos. Shri Ramana Maharishi, Shri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and Sharada Devi were sources of inspiration for young Rajashekaran. At the age of 12, on the sacred day of Buddha Purnima, Rajashekaran had an intense encounter with the Divine, an out-of-body experience that was to change the course of his life. By his 17th year, Rajashekaran's spiritual quest became too fierce to be ignored. He left home on a journey of arduous self-discovery with no assurance whatsoever but only a glimpse of the divine he received at the age of 12. He wandered far and wide studying and practicing meditation. From Tapovan in the Himalayas to Kanyakumari in the south, from Dwarka in the west to Ganga Sagar in the east, he wandered for seven years in India and in Nepal. With just two pieces of clothing and a kamandalu, a holy water jug, and with no idea of where his next meal would be. One day in Gaurikund, he beheld a breathtaking vision. A young man with a glowing countenance and flowing locks was walking towards him with long strides and divine grace. Wonderstruck and gazing at him, Rajashekaran realized that this was none other than Mahavdar Babaji, the enlightened master dwelling in the Himalayas for thousands of years in perpetual youth. It was this great saint who looked at him and uttered the name Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda, an enlightened being in a physical body, young at heart but wise in mind, Rajashekaran undertook years of rigorous penance, intense meditation practices and in-depth study of yoga, tantra, vedanta and shaiva philosophies before he attained the ultimate state of consciousness, the state of Nityananda or eternal bliss. Word of the charismatic saint rode the winds in every direction. People visited Nityananda from far and near. Effortlessly he won their hearts. The time had come and Nityananda was ready to execute the real purpose of his divine birth, the purpose as a guru, as a master to the entire humanity. Life Bliss Foundation is his worldwide movement to spread his message of meditation and inner bliss. With its spiritual nerve center in Bangalore, India and its Western Hemisphere headquarters in Los Angeles, USA, it operates through 1,000 centers and over 78 upcoming ashrams in 30 countries 
causing transformation of humanity through transformation of the individual. How does one describe this great master? The charm of a child, the healing hands of a doctor, the compassion of a mother, the wisdom of a guru. To those who struggle under the many burdens of life, his presence itself is the answer they seek. In his arms, thousands find refuge, the ailing, the needy, and the seekers of God. The Master is an invitation to a journey inwards. In his own words, just allow me to light your being, then you will know that you are pure consciousness and your being pure bliss. Nityanandam Saranam Vachami 